Joining me now in an exchange exclusive is Pat Patius, the CEO of Choice Hotels. Welcome back. It's good to see you. Great to see you, Kelly. So I, I almost wish I had talked to you before the retail sales report, because what would you have said is the strength of the consumer or what trends you're seeing in January? Well, they have a trillion dollars of additional spend capacity today than they did even pre-pandemic. So the consumer is in a very healthy state. We're seeing it in our business. You know, when we look at 2022, the revenue per available room grew every quarter, and we've seen it straight into January of this year. The consumer is prioritizing travel at the top of their list. They're out and they're traveling. They're also traveling at different months of the year. Our fourth quarter numbers were exceptionally strong, huh. up 20% in RevPAR, and they're traveling at different days of the week. So we saw occupancy gains for every single day of the week, particularly on the shadow or shoulder days, rather, of uh, the weekend. So that's both Thursday night and Sunday night. We saw 4% increase in occupancy when you compare it to our pre-pandemic levels. So we're really seeing the consumer out and traveling, and they're in a very healthy state today. So this is, yeah, I figured it out. I figured, this, this is the mystery. We've solved it because in November and December, we had unusually weak spending on kind of goods and retail sales and, and holiday. And you're now telling me you had unusually strong demand in that period. Is that right? That's right. And historically, before the pandemic, the fourth quarter and the, and the first quarter of the year were generally lighter on leisure travel, more heavy on business travel. We saw gains in both segments. The consumer leisure travel demand segment, that entire pie is getting bigger. It's getting bigger because people have more money to spend with rising wages. We have more folks who can wor work remotely. We have retirements occurring at sort of significant rates higher than we were pre-pandemic. And then when you look at the business travel, for our segments in this mid-scale and extended stay world where a lot of our hotels exist, you're seeing the reshoring of American manufacturing and the infrastructure projects hmm. really start to impact that blue-collar traveler who is traveling during the middle of the week. So we're really seeing growth in leisure and also a return of that business travel for our I mean, segments. It's like you should have given the State of the Union. I mean, I, I feel I feel great after listening to this. Maybe I have to junk my, you know, my recession calls. I guess the, the thing I would ask you is on the labor piece of things, where to the point you're making about the strength, is that a, a profit margin risk? You know, is that unsustainable? And, and how is that affecting business? Well, I think when you look at labor in the hotel sector, we are still behind. We were behind. We had a number of open jobs even before the pandemic hit. Uh, we did see a lot of labor come back into our into our segment uh, this past year. Um, when you look at our hotels in particular, we are primarily limited service hotels, so we don't have a lot of um, you know big restaurants and meeting space and amenities. And so, from a labor perspective, limited service hotels have been able to hold up fairly well in a, in a market where where labor is more challenged. That being said, our housekeepers, our front desk folks, have gotten a raise, as have most of sort of the middle class and and uh, and that segment of workers. So. Those are the folks who actually travel in our hotels as well. So it's good to see that they're getting a pay raise. Yeah, I hear Bill Smead, if he's still watching, going, see, I told you. He, we got to ask him why he doesn't uh, invest in choice hotels. It's totally part of his thesis. Uh, Pat, thanks so much for your time today. We really appreciate it.